Welcome back to our beginner guide. Enjoy. So we have our minor hat, which is starting to get very low on us. So we're going to want to try to make sure that we refill that when we can. So going back into our chest, we're going to pull a firefly and we're going to right click on our minor hat, refilling that to 43%. We can also go into the caves and get something known as light bulbs, but we want to try to avoid anything that's super difficult right now. Once again, leave the firefly that's currently in there because you're going to possibly need that in emergency cases. We're kind of full. We're ready to go. Let's go ahead and begin to go and smash up some pig houses. The beauty ab about doing uh, smashing a pig house is that even though you're attacking the pig houses, they're not necessarily going to they're not necessarily going to attack you unless uh, they're provoked. So looking at the right, we still actually do have two pig houses, but we want to get a few more. And there's a specific reason for this. And that is because we want to give, get ourselves some, ac some access to pig skins and, and potentially some extras that we might need. Now, if you do this at nighttime and you smash a pig house, the pig will fall asleep. If it's during the day, the pig will remain awake. And if you don't pick up the resources fast enough, the pigs will continue to try to eat uh, what they can that is on the floor. And that is what the pig skins uh, that they'll attempt to eat. And you don't want to have you don't want to have that happen because obviously you want to make sure that you uh, keep as many of these resources as you can. And pig skins are very, very useful in Don't Starve Together. And you want to get as many of them as you can. This doesn't mean go around your entire world and smash up your houses, but if you are living in in the world of don't starve together and you're beginning to learn um, how to survive smashing up the pig houses is such an easy way of getting early game resources whether it's cut stone or boards as long as you don't smash up too many of them and here we are in our first day of winter so you can tell that it's the first day of winter because the scenery has changed it's almost like kind of like a like a light blue color has kind of filled and you can see that soon uh, there's going to be dusk and it's going to be very very cold so we have our thermal stone that is now at six that is now at six degrees, and you can also tell that uh, we're beginning to slowly uh, get colder and colder and colder. Luckily, though, if you remembered, we pre-made a fire pit and always made sure that we had one handy just in case. So continuing on, let's go ahead and smash up just a few more of these pig homes, just enough to get us a few more uh, pig skins if you can, and try to remember to pick them up. Uh, the pigs will still continue to try to uh, attack you if you attack them. But as Wilson, you can walk near a pig. You can uh, go up to and try to talk to a pig if you want, but they're not going to try to attack you. So leaving these pigs alone, uh, we're going to go back and we're going to take some pig skins with us. And we're going to continue to maybe make one or two extra more pig houses, which I believe we already have. No, we don't actually have any more pre-made right now. Uh, so as we continue on, you're going to now see an ice glacier. And as before, when you see in the ice that we had available uh, in our crock or in our that we used in the crock pot and we used inside of uh, the fridge, we only had small little tiny glaciers. But now we have much larger ones. If you are about to freeze, do not place your campfire next to uh, uh, next to one of these glaciers because it will continuously de deplete what is around it. Uh, so you want to make sure that if you do begin to get a little bit too chilly, place down your campfire warm up next to it until you get nice and toasty. And sometimes it helps to put your thermal stone down so you can wait for the thermal stone to heat up faster while it's on the ground. Let your character get nice and toasty. Once it becomes almost a red glow, uh, you can wait a little bit longer than that so it continues to to you know get even warmer because you can tell the temperature with the show me mod. If you're not using the show me mod, you don't have to you don't have to worry about it. You can just kind of focus on the colors. But as soon as it turns into a deep orange color uh, that is when you're going to want to pick it back up, boom, and you're going to continue to chop down the ice glaciers. So anytime you encounter an ice glacier, if you have your golden pickaxe on you or a pickaxe in general, try to get them. They're very, very helpful, uh, especially with making recipes, especially in wintertime. And they're so plentiful um, yeah, around winter that you just want to continue to use them as much as you can. And if you don't use them, they're eventually just going to melt into as soon as springtime hits anyways. So you might as well get them while you're there. So going back, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go back, make a few of our uh, make maybe one or two pig houses, and then we're gonna use what's ever left over for something even better. Um, and that is known as a ham bat. And ham bats are extra useful when attacking, and I'm gonna show you why. And they're extra useful in winter time because uh, they last even longer. So ham bat is exactly what it sounds like. It's a bat made out of ham. However, 
it's a lot better than a spear and will continue to be for most or if not all of winter uh, and will last the entire time. So unlike a spear or anything else, uh, it'll actually deplete how it spoils. So for example, we're going to go back. We have one pig skin, which we actually, I think we had a few extra left in our chest anyways, but regardless of that, we're going to, we're going to combine them together and grab ourselves one pig skin. We're going to go in our ice box. We're going to grab ourselves spoiled meat to make sure they're large meat, which are actually about to spoil, which is perfect. And this is why we left our spoiled meat there. We didn't want to cook them up just yet. We're going to go to our alchemy engine. We're going to craft ourselves a rope. We're going to go to our fighting tab and we're going to highlight the hand bat and make sure that we have a few tweaks on our inventory. Highlight the hand bat, select the hand bat. And now we have a hand bat that is going to last us for 10 days. So from now until 10 days is when it's going to spoil, uh, which means that this hand bat is going to do 60 damage for up to 10 days. And then after that, it's going to go down, to, uh, it's basically just going to start depleting um, as it kind of begins to spoil, it starts to lose damage. So over the spear, which only does 34 and has a limited 150, you have a hand bat that does 60 damage uh, over the course until it begins to spoil. And so now we're going to take the hand bat and we're going to take our spear, which we're not going to obviously toss away, but we're going to toss it on the ground in case somebody else would like to use it. Once again, take our, our thermal stone that is now nice and toasty, put our old thermal stone on the ground and put our ice in the fridge. Now we have a beautiful hand bat. However, we're not now noticing that things are about to start to spoil a lot quicker uh, inside of our ice box. Not necessarily quicker, but we have things that we need to start cooking up or decide what to do with inside of our ice box. So what I like to do in the ice box is separate our spoiled stuff uh, from potentially our good stuff. And that way you can kind of tell uh, what needs to, what's an, you know very important for that time. So we take our, we're going to take our pig skins, we're going to take our, our boards, we're going to take our cut stone, we're going to go to our structures tab, and now we can make what is called a pig house. Pig houses are great. Uh, they basically relocate pigs close to you, which looks like we've already done. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to place more of these next to the ones that are already over there, uh, which Aki already made previously for us. Now, pig houses are great to have close to your base, as long as they're not too close to the base, because... Uh, come day 31 we're gonna have a whole other problem on our hands so now that we have four pig homes we can go ahead and put that there you want to make sure they have a little bit of space and we're going to tell you why uh, for example you don't want to have these you know too close to the wall or sp spread out too much you want them kind of close to each other and we're going to show you why coming soon uh, so when we get enough rocks we'll kind of go back to our pig houses and show you how you can uh, have your own little pig farm and uh, handy dandy hand bat every single time that you need one so take your extra cut stone put it inside of your chest if you have room to do so uh, once again our hungry rabbits are about to get extra hungry and and soon pass away so you have the choice of either feeding them uh, a carrot or anything that you can uh, you can decide to feed them um, any berries if you want to keep them alive but in this case we're going to murder the berries and we're going to use them as uh, we're going to use them as meat and morsels so now that we have our spoiled berries, we have our spoiled uh, meat, we've made our hand bat, which means that we no longer need this meat. We can go to the campfire. Uh, we can use either our Action Queue Reborn mod that I explained in a previous video, which you can select, double click on here, or you can hold shift with the Action Queue Reborn and begin to cook. And now, instead of spoiled berries, we now have uh, better berries that can now be used in recipes uh, and, and once again, as soon as the color goes to green, you can tell that, uh, you know, you're back in the, you're back in the way of need, being able to cook without having to worry about the next recipe that you make, uh, come almost ha half green or basically you want to make sure that it's, it's not on the spoil meter, um, when you, when you decide to cook something. For example, if I were to take these berries that I'm just now cooking that are almost about to spoil completely rot uh, and I and I cooked with them they would give you half the value of the food that a normal meatball would do uh, and you definitely don't want to have that once again take your meat cook that up and now I'm going to show you another recipe that is extremely useful and I would highly recommend getting used to using that and don't starve together so normally our monster meat we've taken and we've combined them with three filler in order to make ourselves a meatball but we're going to make ourselves a new recipe before we sign off on this video and it's going to be a meaty stew so you can tell that our hunger is 150 and we're getting very hungry we take our meatball out of the crock pot that is now ready it's going to it's going to feed us for 62.5 but that's not enough we want to have one meal that we can fill our bellies completely so we're going to take two 
cooked meat, they have to be the big ones. They can't be the small ones. For example, we take a morsel uh, and we decide to use those instead. It will not make the same recipe. So we take our cooked meat, two in there, one monster meat, not two. And now you have a meat value of three, a meat value of three. We take one filler of any kind, and now we are making ourselves a meaty stew. And a meaty stew is one of the best meals you can make and don't starve together for completely filling your belly up. Uh, and that way you can have yourself uh, a tasty meal. It cooks very quickly, a lot quicker than a lot of other, other custom meals, for example, like a pierogi and stuff. So you want to make sure that... Um, this is definitely something on your radar at all times. 150 hunger. The rest is kind of just there for bonus, plus sanity, plus health, which is always good. And one bite to eat, and you're now back to full stats. All right, so there you go. Day 22 already. Uh, if we're cooking up a storm. We're making a cool base. Uh, and we're going to come back again uh, very shortly and show you how to make a birdcage. And getting through uh, close to day 30 already, so make sure that you guys are ready because when the Deer Club shows up, it's going to be an interesting battle. Once again, before we sign off, um, if you guys decide to make yourself a little bit of extra armor, always make sure that you have a 100% log suit. Uh, one or two, ro so we need two ropes, and then always make sure that you have a little bit of logs uh, left over after making so. Now we have ourselves two log suits because we're going to be needing them for the next episode. And that is it, guys. We will see you guys in the next one where we make ourselves um, where we make ourselves uh, a birdcage and kind of go over a few other things before we have to encounter the deer clops. Thanks again for listening, guys. Once again, I stream every day on uh, Twitch TV, and we try to do these YouTube videos as often as we can. So I hope you guys are enjoying them and continuing to learn along. And just as we go to sign off, it begins to snow. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye!